in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Thou, and, thou, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. forth her son when she looked into his shining face she knew he was the holy one and I wonder how Mary felt as she watched him grow I wonder how she felt when she knew on his precious face and they said us him to die I wonder how Mary felt watching his despair I wonder how she felt when she saw came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger.
justice had a price we could not pay but God displayed his mercy the greatest gift of love when we could not reach heaven And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from heaven, or into heaven, 
The shepherds said one to another, Now let us go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. King of the Jews, we have seen his star in the east and have came to worship him. Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Oh. 
beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone. And guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay, Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light. To the land of perfect day, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest for the redeemed, the good and blessed. Yonder in glory, when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory. Read on. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Now, this is the Christmas story. Tonight we ask you the question, what will you do with Jesus? Mary believed and the angel said, be it unto me according to thy word, and pondered all these things in her heart. The shepherds believed and returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. While the wise men traveled a great distance to find and worship the Christ child, and King Herod was troubled and planned to kill the promised Messiah. But here's the question. What will you do with Jesus? They journeyed far, a weary pair. They sought for shelter from the cold night air Some place where she could lay her head Where she could give her babe a quiet bed Was there no room, no corner there In all the town a spot someone could spare was there no soul come to their aid? A stable bear is where the family stayed. Do you have room for a Savior? And do you seek Him anew? Have you a place for as men of old Would you have come that night Would you have sought the light Do you have room A star arose 
a wondrous light, a sign from God this was the holy night, and yet so few would go to see the babe who came to rescue you and me. This child divine is now a king, the gift of life to all the world he brings. And all mankind he saves from doom, but on that night for him there was no room. In Luke chapter 2 we read, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus was more than a prophet. Yes, he is the promised son of David that will rule and reign forever. Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, the only begotten Son of God. As you think on this question in your heart, let's kind of fast forward in the story and see what Pilate's decision was and see how he chose and what he chose to do with Jesus. Condemned. It is a sad state of a man to be condemned. It was for envy they delivered him. The chief priest, the scribe, bound him. Under the cover of the night, Jesus, king of the Jews. But he was like no other man.
Art thou the king of the Jews? Thou sayest. Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? Whom will you have that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus? Give us What then shall I do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? What evil had he done? He stirreth up the people. He says he's a Christ king. He forbids to pay tribute to Caesar. Crucify. 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 Take him. Crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And we have a law, and by his, by our law, he ought to die, because he made himself son of God. <laughs> Which art thou? I'm innocent of this blood of this just person. See you to it. His blood be on us. And all of our children crucified! 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 Be gone. The bloodstained cross is just a constant reminder of that dark day. Jesus was not the only one on trial that day. I was on trial before God. I had condemned his son, thus condemning myself. All the water in the world could never wash his blood off my hands. I am condemned. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you might know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto him, Behold the man! When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye, take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. They led Christ to Calvary And he spoke not one word Just the cries of lost sinners Was all the Savior heard. Then they pierced him so deep in his side until the blood came streaming down. And that's how Jesus purchased my salvation and I find no fault in him then they pierced him so deep in his side until the blood
Jesus purchased my salvation and I find no fault in Him. Good evening. Good evening. The first trial of Jesus Christ was a mockery. So now we're going to give Jesus a fair trial. And I'm going to panel you, the audience, as a jury. And you all are going to have to make a decision. What will you do with Jesus? I'm going to call witnesses from all Bible times. And their words are going to come straight from the Bible. And I'm going to adjure them to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The first witness I'm going to call tonight is John the Baptist. Now John, you grew up with Jesus. You even baptized Him in the river of Jordan. John, what think you of Christ? Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank you, John, for that testimony. You may be seated. The next witness I'm going to call is a person who often spoke thoughtlessly, yet he forsook all he had to follow the Lord Jesus, Simon Peter. Simon! Can you tell the courtroom tonight what you think of this one here in the prisoner's dock? He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Simon, for that testimony. Next we have a man who is often different than Simon Peter. He was a man of mystic, had a pensive and thoughtful spirit, John the Apostle. Now, John, you were with the Lord Jesus. What think you of Him? The Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. Glory the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, John. And next we have a follower of Christ who often had trouble with his faith. Matter of fact, he didn't believe until he saw the prince in his hands and in his side. Thomas, do you care to come and tell the jury tonight what you think of Jesus? My Lord, my God. Thank you, Thomas. You all tonight are probably wondering, these are just the testimonies of men. Aren't there any women, you might ask? Ah, Martha. Martha, he spent many a happy days in your home. You observed him in all kinds of different 
situations. Martha, do you care to tell us tonight what you think of the Lord Jesus? Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Thank you, Martha. Then we have the, the woman that met Jesus in the heat of the day at the well. The Samaritan woman. Ma'am, do you mind to tell us what you think of Jesus? Come, see a man who told me all things that ever I did. It's not this the Christ. Now these are all human witnesses, you might say. Isn't there an angel we might summon? I summon a holy angel tonight under oath. Angel, do you care to tell our courtroom tonight what you think of the Lord Jesus? For unto you this day is born a Savior. In the, he is the Christ our Lord. Thank you, holy angel. But now you're probably thinking, these are all his friends. Why don't we hear from some of his enemies? Pharisee, in your self-righteous robe, you wanted him crucified. Can you tell the courtroom why? He, he received the sinners. Aren't you all glad he did? Caiaphas, you were the high priest. You wanted him dead. You wanted him nailed to a cross. Can you tell us why? He said he was a son of God. Caiaphas, you, you're dismissed. Centurion, you helped drive the nails in his hands and in his feet. You put him on the cross. You tell us who this is. Truly, this was the Son of God. Yet, you nailed him to the cross. You're dismissed. Judas, you betrayed our Lord for. 30 pieces of silver. Why? I have betrayed innocent blood. Then we have Pilate. Pilate, you sentenced him to be crucified. What are your thoughts on this just man? I find no fault with him. Miss Pilate. Well, we've heard from his friends tonight. We've even heard from some of his enemies. We've heard from a holy angel. But you're probably thinking, if we've summoned an angel, isn't there a, a demon we might summon? Let's hear what the demons have to say. I summon a dirty, filthy, rotten demon from the pit. Demon. I adjure you by God to tell the truth. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Back to the pit, demon. Now tonight, we've heard from witnesses on a broad spectrum tonight. We've heard from his friends. We've even heard from his enemies. We've heard from an angel. And we've heard from a demon. You're probably thinking, all these witnesses are from a long time ago. Aren't there any Current witnesses, I say yes there is. How many of you tonight will be willing to testify by the uplifting of a hand that you found him faithful and love him with all your heart? Faithful. faithful. Thank you. Well, that being said, it's with my uttermost humility tonight to call our last and final witness. God Almighty, can you tell us what you think of Jesus? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, after nailing Jesus to the cross, God reserved the decision of the court, and on the third day, He raised Jesus from the dead. He's shown to be the Son of God according to to the resurrection from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we ask you a question. It's time. You're the jury. I want you to ask this question to yourself. What will you do with Jesus?
Didn't they do a good job this evening? Thank the Lord for that. Sister Mullins, come on over here and just say hi. We appreciate Sister Mullins. Hey, let's give him a hand, would you? Thank you for coming out tonight. I'm going to say just a few things, though, for just a few minutes. Uh, these people gave up their time, but they gave up their time to do something, and that was to point you towards the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand today that there's more to the Lord and more to Christmas than just a babe born in Bethlehem. But that baby was born, he was raised up, and he came to die. He came in the womb of a virgin, given by the Holy Ghost of God, God with us, Emmanuel. And he lived and he died on the cross of Calvary. And after that, he rose again on the third day. And he ever lives to make intercession for us that are saved by the grace of God. Not only for us, but I want to say this tonight. If you found yourself a sinner, he'll save you tonight. And I want to do something, if you don't mind, I, if you'll just uh, give, just, uh, just play Amazing Grace for just a few minutes, would you bow your head? I want to give you the gospel one more time. Listen to me. The gospel is this, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, that he died according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. And salvation comes to a man when he realizes he cannot do anything himself to please God. Not one religious rite, not the Lord's table, not baptism, not one work. But when he believes Jesus Christ as his Savior. Would you search your heart now? Would you all stand please?